back with, uh, with more of our celebration of Global Fertilizer Day. For all you teachers and you students out there, make sure you, you go down to the bottom to the chat session and put your questions in because we have got another fantastic speaker coming up. Pamela is going to be a hard one to top, but we're going to give it a shot. We've got Linda Dempsey, who is the Vice President of Public Affairs for CF Industries. We'll let Linda talk about CF and, and, and give us a little bit of a rundown on that. But just know that Linda, as the Vice President of Public Affairs, she handles all global public affairs for this massive company that reaches around the world. And she reports directly to the CEO and President of, uh, of CF Industries. Before joining CF, she was a Vice President of, and of uh, International Economic Affairs at the National Association of Manufacturers. And she's had lots of other jobs between uh, since then. One of the cool jobs, and we'll get to talk to her about this later, is that she was a senior trade advisor on Capitol Hill in the Senate Finance Committee. Lots of things to, to talk about with her. This is a fascinating interview. She is going to have a discussion with Corey Rosenbush, who is the president of the Fertilizer Institute. So we've got two inspiring folks, Corey and Linda, to talk a little bit about Linda's job and what her role is in this most important industry. Remember, put your questions in. My name is Corey Rosenbush and I'm the president and CEO of the Fertilizer Institute. So what do a drag line operator, a chef, and a lobbyist have in common? Well, they all are careers in the fertilizer industry. And I'm joined today by Linda Dempsey. Welcome, Linda. It's a pleasure to speak with you today. Would you please introduce yourself and tell everyone a little bit about what you do in the fertilizer industry? I'm so happy to be here, Corey. Thanks for the opportunity. I'm the Vice President for Public Affairs at CF Industries. CF Industries is one of the largest nitrogen fertilizer producers in the world. We have operations across 11 U.S. states, two provinces in Canada, and two sites in the U.K. So I handle public affairs. What, what even is that? I think about public affairs as managing the external stakeholder relationships that our company has. Not with our customers, not with the vendors who produce the equipment, like you see up here from one of our facilities, but other relationships, like with associations, like with you, Corey, um, but also government relationships. Um, we're in states, we're in provinces, we're in uh, other countries. It's at the local level, it's at the state level, and it's at the federal level. But it's not just that. It's other business associations, ones nationally known in, in all three of our jurisdictions and beyond, other industries that we might want to partner with, but also non-governmental organizations. And, and one of the relationships that CF has had for a long time that we're particularly proud of is with the Nature Conservancy. We work with the Nature Conservancy on a program for our plus, and, and TFI, you do a great job on, on these issues as well, but making sure that fertilizer is used appropriately, not too much, not at the wrong time, making sure farmers are using the right amount of right fertilizer so they get the crop yields they need, so they can produce more food, but that they do so in an environmentally sustainable way. So in addition to that, right, I report up to the CEO and advise the entire senior leadership team of external developments. They might be political developments, they might be other developments in the world, different, you know, how, how public opinion is shifting. Certainly government policy, regulatory policy, laws, international treaties and, and agreements that come up. And then the last part of my job, and like many jobs, is to build my team. I have colleagues here in Washington, D.C., where I sit, uh, but also in Canada and the U.K. And part of my role is to help them develop, to grow in their careers, to develop their talents, both 
for our company and the strength of our company going forward, but for themselves as well as, as, as they continue on their professional career. So CF is one of the largest nitrogen producers for fertilizer in the world. Um, you, you didn't start in the fertilizer industry. Can you talk a little bit about your path on Capitol Hill and within associations and how you landed at CF? Oh, it is a long and winding road. And, you know, look, um, when I was in high school, Corey, I wanted to be a lawyer. I um, started the debate team at my high school. I ran it. I was really psyched. That was what I wanted to do. I wanted to be in court. So I went to college. I studied political science, race through, and I went to law school. And one of the big things in college was my advisor had been um, a Ph.D., uh, student and from University of California in Berkeley. He didn't think I should go into law school. He wanted me to do something more critical thinking or something else. But I, I, was, I was definite. But I did go to UC Berkeley Law School, and that was really pivotal. I got there. I was young. I was 21, one of the youngest kids in the class. And I, was, I, I needed to learn a lot. And the people I really was attracted to at, at the school were people who had done other things. And so I decided I needed a break. And what did I do? I went to the Peace Corps in West Africa. Because I grew up on a farm. I'd worked at veterinary hospitals. And I spoke French. It was West Africa, Togo, a very small country. You can look it up. And I ran an ag education program, both at the school level and then sort of at the superintendent level. We, uh, with a team of um, Togolese professors, we wrote the lesson plan model for the entire middle school curriculum for two years. Um, it was fascinating, great stories, learned to ride a motorcycle. Um, but I really grew up, and it developed the passion I have now for fitting things into the world. And here's one of the poorest countries in the world um, that had so much less than we had, but there were bright spots. There was the integration, there were the relationships, there was international trade, there were other things that could help us grow. So I came back to law school, finished law school with that as, as my passion. Uh, I worked at some law firms for a while and got an opportunity then to work up on Capitol Hill. I worked on one of the big committees, the Senate Committee on Finance that deals with tax and trade. I worked on a lot more issues than that, but really saw how legislation was made, how you worked with the administration. I worked, um, when I was up there, I worked across the aisle in a really bipartisan way with Democratic and Republican administrations developing policy, and, and really exciting to me, I worked on the first major trade legislation dealing with Africa, right? And, and so here, you know, I'd had that, that type of experience. Um, when my two bosses both retired uh, over time and I was starting my own family, uh, I moved to the association world and really there developed sort of advocacy skills and, you know, working with a whole bunch of businesses across the um, way, most recently at the National Association of Manufacturers, where there's, I don't know, 54 different manufacturing categories, of which fertilizer is one, um, thousands of companies trying to work together to in advancement of, of growing that sector. The opportunity at CF um, came to me and, you know, Sitting here now, it's like it was the perfect blend of that intersection between agriculture and manufacturing, advocacy, and relationships. So it, it sounds perfect, but I certainly didn't start my, my uh, educational career, or even my professional career, thinking that this would be the job I would have. I, I love that we share a little bit of a background in ag education as a uh, former National FFA officer, staying involved in FFA for me means getting to talk to so many students about career opportunities. And, and so many of them do have this vision of being in Washington, D.C. And so what they think about is what they see on the news, perhaps, with the <laughs> political coverage. Um, but give us a glimpse of what a day looks like for you, because it's not the politics that you see on the news all day. What is what is a typical, and I know there's no typical day, but what is a what is an average day perhaps look like for someone that's in a government relations role? 
So a lot of talking and a lot of talking both with internal um, people at CF, at our business associations and, and with allies, but also a lot of discussions with external stakeholders, particularly the government or, or think tanks or others. So, I, you know, I might start my morning talking with my team, maybe one team member or having a team call. What are the issues we, we are working on and how to drive that forward? I might need to call up an expert at CF. You know, we've got people who are steeped in agronomy and engineering and um, international trade flows in, in ways that I'm never going to be that expert to understand something. And then I might reach out and, and talk to a member of Congress or their staff and explain to them what's going on. Or maybe I'll facilitate, and you know, in the world of, of virtual meetings, you know, I can facilitate have bringing in a plant manager from one of our facilities to explain why a certain policy or regulation is important to CF and, and what it would mean for, for jobs in that community um, or for how we operate safely, how, how we manage our own, own business. I'm probably going to be working on some written submission to someone, uh, whether it's a government, whether it's an internal document, um, reframing issues um, to, to make sure that they're understood at the right level. We, there's a lot of detail um, that all of us get into, but not everybody needs to have, have the same, same amount of detail. So that's just a little bit of a snapshot. You, you, you mentioned, um, you know, issues a lot, and, and in many ways, um, you know, your role is managing issues and policy uh, for, uh, on behalf of your company. As you look into the future, next five to ten years, what do you think are the biggest issues um, that, that your company or the industry will be facing? Well, certainly one of the biggest is around the regulation of greenhouse gas emissions and climate change, right? This is something the entire world is really focused on. And for our industry, and CF in particular, we're, we're among the probably the most efficient of producers. But the feedstock we use is natural gas. And there are emissions in when we combust the product. There are uh, process emissions that it's just the chemistry, right? There's nothing we can do to eliminate those emissions because that is how you produce ammonia. That is how you produce nitrogen fertilizer. So these issues, along with international trade and global competitiveness, um, are really going to figure importantly in our industry going forward. And so, you know, those issues are, are important to our company. We've been, you know, issuing sustainability reports for a very long time, are constantly looking at improving our processes, looking at new technologies, things, you know, that are, that are out there today or that might be there tomorrow. But this is going to be a big issue uh, that we're going to see. Um, you know, we, we already have regulation in, in our facilities in Canada and the UK. I'm not in the United States, but, you know, we'll, we'll see how those debates and elections and, and all of those things matter. So being ready for that. Trade is also really important. So nitrogen fertilizer is, is largely a commodity product, um, and it flows from all parts of the world. And so if you have another com country out there giving subsidies or unfair advantages, they get to lower their price, and they get to outcompete uh, our sales here or when, when we're exporting. So getting and ensuring of appropriate trade rules so everybody plays fairly, Ensuring that their trade is important, not just for our products directly, but our farmers, right? Our farmers produce so much more than we can eat here in the United States. And so export markets for them are important. And so understanding all of that as we have a lot of, of churn in the international trading environment, um, that too is going to be a really big issue. So turning specifically to your career and your job, um, what's your favorite part? What do, you, what do you like most about your work? I think it's always the people and the culture. Mm -hmm. I have been really fortunate, and some of it's choice, right? Not just total serendipity, 
that I have worked with for people who are brighter than I am, people who um, are, are really capable. And, and certainly when I think about CF, that, that's, that's absolutely true. But when I worked on the Hill, I worked for, um, you know, really um, bright and, and, and um, well-meaning uh, senators who, who really were interested in, 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 you know, how all these different issues fit together. Being in a culture that is focused on in, in being inclusive, working together, thinking about the long term, not just thinking about today. Gee, that makes all the difference, Corey. I, I, I've worked in a lot of different situations. I've worked in big offices and small offices. I've worked directly as a lawyer, directly just as a lobbyist. And now this, this part of my career is, is much broader. But it, 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 it is the people in the culture that matter so much and the issues, right? I want to be challenged, right? I don't want to work, walk into my office and have to do the same thing every day. I want to learn new things. Um, and so that, that's really what, what I love about, you know, where I am now, but where I've been before. So we, we may not be new to agriculture, but you and I also share another thing in common and that we are new to our jobs. <laughs> and I'm sure we, we can uh, attest to the fact that we've learned a lot in, you know, the last six plus months. Um, give us a fun fact, maybe, that you've learned about CF or, or fertilizer that, that maybe people don't realize or know. So the thing that really um, is really compelling to me about fertilizer is the role it plays in enhancing the productivity of our food production. Right. We have increased, in large part because of fertilizer, the gro global grain harvest by about 140%. At the same time, we've only increased the arable land we're using in agriculture by 7%. And that's really important. It's really important to that climate change debate um, I was mentioning earlier. Um, Forests are really good at sequestering carbon. They're, they're one of the great natural resources the earth has going forward. And so fertilizer's ability to make the land that's in operation right now even more productive, it helps the bottom line of our farmers. It gets food to people who need it around the world, but it also protects that far, that, that, those forests that we need this is going to be really important going forward. Um, we need to really dramatically increase food production if we are going to meet the needs of a growing world population. But we've got to do it in a way that we're keeping our forests intact and, and, and fertilizer is right, right at the heart of that. So Linda, we're, we're talking to our future workforce and we need that that next generation, that pipeline of talent coming into the industry. What, uh, what advice would you leave with uh, anyone listening in today as they think about their future careers? So, so a few things. Um, I think one of the ones is learn how to learn. Mm -hmm. um, I started, you know, as I said, I started thinking about my career in very different things. And I spent a lot of time learning how to talk and argue and advocate. Um, but I've had to learn a heck of a lot more, right? Um, and so learning how to learn, I think is really one of those important skills. Um, learning how to work with each other, learning how to work as a team. Um, it's, it's important, hopefully you're having those opportunities in school right now. But when you're at a business, um, in the government, in any of these types of careers, you have to work with each other. And in ways that are collaborative, in ways that recognize that some people have certain talents, others have others, but all together, you can make a difference and you can be a stronger team. Um, and certainly, you know, my experience is the diversity of teams is really related to the success of teams. And so working with people from all different types and walks of life is important. And then following your passion, finding something that you are driven about, that you want to do, because 
frankly, we all spend a lot of time at our jobs, and so you want to be happy there. And I think the other thing that's really important that my career shows is keep your ears and eyes open. If someone opens a different door for you that you think you might not want to walk into, take it. I never thought I wanted to work on Capitol Hill. Didn't care about partisanship, don't like it. Um, I cared about good policy. I cared about good outcomes. But actually, working on Capitol Hill helped give me some of the skills that I need to do exactly the type of job I have now. So listening to other people, forming relationships with others who can open different doors for you, um, I think is really critical going forward. Linda Dempsey with CF Industries, thank you for sharing your career insights with our future and for everything you do for the fertilizer industry. Thank you, Corey. It's a pleasure and thank you and uh, looking forward to keep the conversation going. Hello, Linda, and happy Global Fertilizer Day to you. Thank you. Happy Global Fertilizer Day to everyone. That was a terrific interview you had with Corey. Thank you very much for doing that. Thank you for, for, for taking our participants on the, on the journey of Linda. And it's been, <laughs> it's been an interesting journey. And you have inspired some questions. So we're going to, we've got about, uh, five, six minutes here to talk about some things. Uh, first question is, do you have any advice for students that want to pursue a career in ag or a similar career to what you've done? Great. So for agriculture, um, I mean, although this applies to any career, I think get some practical experience, right? Join FFA. Um, I grew up on a farm. I wasn't part of FFA. Um, I wish I had been in, in retrospect, but get some of that practical experience on the ground. It, it, it just, it's incomparable. You know, for me, working on Capitol Hill was the same sort of thing, that practical experience. But then you got to, you know, you got to um, do the coursework too, right? And, you know, whether it's economics, or, you know, obviously the sciences and biology and chemistry and, and all of that. Um, those are really important things. But, you know, you got to learn about weather patterns. You got, there, there are just so many things to learn out there. So, um, you know, just get both that practical side as well as learn and learn, you know, um, uh, all the different topics that, that can help you there. I am, I am so eager to ask you about learning how to ride a motorcycle, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to give you another question that came in from, uh, from one of our students. How do you combat the negative media about the use of chemical fertilizer? Good, really good question. Well, they're all good questions at this point, but um, I think we start with a recognition about what, what's driving the media, what, what's driving the concern. And there certainly is a concern if people are overusing fertilizer or using it right before a rainstorm or not applying it in the right way. And that the, the 4R Plus program I talked about that we work with the Nature Conservancy, it's being part of the solution, right? Understanding there's issues and concerns about there, out there. You know, we produce chemical products. Um, and we do it safely. Safety is, you know, core to the philosophy of our, our, our company, but also how they're used, how they're used sustainably. Um, you know, you don't avoid issues. You take them on. You understand what's true about an issue. You help solve it and, and try to be part of that solution. And, and then you talk to others and you build partners. And one of the things we do with the 4R Plus program is not just with the Nature Conservancy, but other businesses and other organizations and universities. So how can we do this? How can we broaden this message and get everybody to use fertilizer in the right way? That was a, that was a great answer to a very hard question. I'm going to ask you a harder one. So what qualities or education do you believe to be helpful to build better relationships between governments and corporations? Um, 
listening, right? I think when I think about my job, I need to understand what are the objectives of those government policymakers? What is it they think that is important? What, what's my objective? What's my company's objective, my industry's objectives? Are there some natural places for us to meet? And usually, if you take it up at a high enough level, you can find we want to meet. We care about a sustainable world where businesses can create good paying jobs across this country, right? Something most businesses and most policymakers agree on. Then you start taking it down, right? And you start looking at those issues we're not going to agree with every policymaker on everything. The policymakers certainly don't agree with each other. Um, but you can find areas to work. And, and we found it working with Democrats, working with Republicans in, in different states or even the same state. You can work with, you know, some of them on all of these things. Uh, there's a bipartisan fertilizer caucus on, on Capitol Hill, for instance, and, and, and they care a lot about the issues that, that our industry cares about, and they move forward really good policy. But sometimes you might be working with a Republican senator on something or a, a Democrat, and you work with them where you can, um, but you keep the conversation going. Um, there's lots of times that we all disagree, um, and just like in our personal relationships with our families, our friends, you disagree, but you got to keep talking and you don't make it personal. Um, and, and you try to build those personal relationships. Linda Dempsey, uh, we could talk to you for quite a while. I just want to summarize a few things that I was taking notes with and nod your head if you're still on board with these. You said learn how to learn. You said learn how to be part of a team. You said follow your passion. And you said keep your eyes open for any kind of new opportunities. As we're wrapping this up, I just wanted to highlight those, those great pieces of advice that you have for all of our students and for all of our teachers. Linda, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your time today. My pleasure. Enjoy, everybody. <laughs>